We're going to get a look at one of the guys in the welterweight division that is going to be reckoned with for a long time. 26 year old Paul Williams taking stage in our main event against Carlos Quintana. I'd like to welcome in the former undisputed heavyweight champion of the world Lennox Lewis and Lennox when you take a look at Paul Williams he's undefeated he's 33 and 0 with 24 knockouts. How do you gauge his progress so far from a technical standpoint. Well his progress is great his technical skills are great too. You're talking about a very scary guy because he's six foot one he throws punches in bunches he gives you different angles. I spoke with him and he says he wants to start sitting down under his shots. That means he's thinking and that makes him a very dangerous opponent for anybody and that means he's thinking about knocking people out. So that makes him a nightmare for any uh, 147 pound uh, opponent. And he's a guy that has a lot of buzz limited amateur experience. Max oh, yeah. Kellerman. Ma he, Lennox has talked about the skill factor. Where does Paul Williams fit in the welterweight landscape. You know Paul Williams is an inconvenient truth. You know in the boxing world we're bracing for an eventual and hoping for an eventual Floyd Mayweather Jr. fight against either Miguel Cotto or Antonio Margarito. And yet it's Margarito's conqueror Paul Williams at six foot one or looks to me more like six foot two welterweight southpaw who throws a hundred punches around and as I mentioned has a reach two inches longer than Muhammad Ali's. It's that fighter Paul Williams who likely presents Floyd Mayweather Jr. the welterweight and pound for pound champion with potentially his greatest threat. But first he has to get past Carlos Quintana tonight who is a slick boxer in his own right. Let's take a look at the tail of the tape for our main event Paul Williams and Carlos Quintana. See the height advantage decidedly in favor of Williams from the armpit to the end of the fist is only a half inch difference in the arm length. Both fighters weighed in at 146 and three quarter pounds. You see that Paul Williams has on our unofficial scales tonight weighed in at 164 pounds. Quintana at 158. Time for the rules with our unofficial ringside scorer, Harold Letterman. The Paul Williams Carlos Quintana fight is scheduled for 12 rounds using the Unified Rules in the Association of Boxing Commissions. There is no three knockdown rule. The doctor or the referee can stop the fight. Case of cut is caused by an accidental headbutt. We go to the scorecards after four rounds have been completed, and you cannot be saved by the bell in any round, including the 12th and final round. Bob! Here comes Carlos Quintana. His passion is basketball. He's an avid basketball player, but he hopes he doesn't get bounced tonight by Paul Williams. He recently got involved in a business with a gym and he says when I get through Paul Williams tonight I'll be able to buy a few more Max is he overconfident you know he was brought in as an opponent against Joel Julio the undefeated Colombian puncher at the time and he boxed Julio silly then brought in as an opponent against Miguel Cotto was expected to fare better than he did Cotto destroyed him in likely Cotto's to date most dominant performance because of that fight Williams is under a little pressure here to look similarly impressive against Quintana as Cotto did not easy because Quintana is a very good boxer Quintana told us well if Antonio Margarito could hit Paul Williams why can't I we'll find out over the next 12 rounds of boxing so Carlos Quintana in the ring one loss on his resume that was to Miguel Cotto now we wait the arrival here at the Grand Ballroom of Paul Williams. Paul Williams told us yesterday, hey, people worry about my style, my height, my reach. I don't have a style. I let them worry about it. It's all psychological. I just do my thing. You know, I hear about Paul Williams a lot in boxing circles. Boy, he has a bad style for opponents because he's so tall, so good. It's another way of saying he's better than the other guys. Uh, again, he is... He has taken the mantle from Antonio Margarito as the most avoided fighter in boxing. Well, he says Quintana's going to run, but might take a little longer, and he feels he's going to be able to chase him down tonight as he puts his first title defense on the line. Time for the formal introductions once again up to the ring and Michael Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, from the Pachanga Resort Casino of Temecula, California, Goose and Tudor Promotions is proud to present the main event of the evening. 12 rounds of boxing for the WBO Welterweight Championship of the World. 
sanctioned by the California State Athletic Commission, Executive Director of Mundo Garcia, Chairman Peter Noonan, WBO President and Supervisor for this fight, Francisco Paco Barcarcel. At ringside, the three judges scoring this contest will be Jose Cobian, Tony Krebs, and Michael Pernick. And inside the ring, your referee in charge of the action, Jack Rees. And now, for the thousands in attendance here at Pachanga and the millions watching around the world, ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's get ready to rumble! <laughs> Fighting out of the blue corner, wearing black and silver, official weight 146 and three quarter pounds. His professional record, an excellent one. 24 victories, including 19 knockouts, only one defeat. From Moca, Puerto Rico, the number 10 WBO and number 4 WBA ranked contender in the world, Carlos Elinio Quintana. And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the red corner, wearing white. Official weight also 143, three quarter pounds. A perfect professional record consisting of 33 bouts, 33 victories, including 24 knockouts from Aiken, South Carolina. The reigning, defending, undefeated WBO Wilderweight Champion of the World, Paul the Punisher. Paul Williams was hoping to face a bigger name opponent tonight, and we were hoping to bring it to you, but nobody wants to fight him. Oh, the Mohawk, the Clubber Lang. And if he can show why no one wants to fight him against a fighter as skillful as Cantana, who's an underrated boxer, he will be making a statement indeed. You ready? Referencing Kermit Cintron, who had an injury, and the Williams camp fully expected that fight to not actually come off. Battle of Southpaws, Williams and Quintana. When we asked Quintana about the height and reach disadvantage, he said it's not a big deal. I like the idea of the Mohawk here from uh, Paul Williams. So, should he come away with an impressive win tonight? Gives boxing fans something they can identify him with. You know, that six foot two South Paul throws 100 punches around with an 82 inch wingspan. Oh, yeah, and he has a mohawk. <laughs> They'll be saying, Who's that tall guy with the mohawk? <laughs> yeah. He's trying to push six foot one, but Max, you're right, he looks a lot more like six foot two. Standing next to him, it feels that way. Or else I'm shorter than I thought I was. Well, I can say six foot one because I'm six foot five. <laughs> See Cantana trying to give Williams some movement right away. Good short right hand on the inside by Williams. I stop. Break. Quintana's showing some good movement. Oh, combination from Quintana. He landed a left hand in there. Oh, as you can see, Paul Williams has a great chin. I think that's more of a wake-up call for him. Using his long reach as he's supposed to. Stop. Break. Paul Williams really hasn't hit in his groove yet. He's still warming up in his first round. Checking out Quintana to see, see his movements. Quintana again able to connect with the left. Donna 
in retreat mode, but a couple of left hands have found the mark. Fight out, fight out, come on, fight out of it. It's difficult to run around against Paul Williams because he's got such long legs. You know, one step, he's cutting off the ring on you real quick. Well, the fact that Quintana's landed several left hands. Quintana's been boxing very well so far. See, Quintana hasn't realized that's his money punch right there, and he should really set something up right, so he stop. can Breaks throw that left hand and land it with some force. Not the crazy punch output that Williams is known for. Quintana's so not, not giving him a stationary target. Quintana digging right in there. He might have hurt Williams with that right hook. Yeah, very good first round for Carlos Quintana. And here we see at the end of a round, Quintana throwing the right hand, catching Williams. Williams never really liked that punch. I think that's a wake up call for him. He saw Paul Williams hit against Charmbe Mitchell with a right hook like that. He seems to be susceptible, uh, susceptible to it against Southpaws. In the corner of Williams said, You're not using the jab. He was, according to CompuBox, 8 for 34 with the jab in round number one. Good first round for Quintana. He landed a couple of left hands and that right hand we showed you at the end of the first. The fact that Miguel Cotto was able to really roll over Quintana was more a credit to Cotto than anything else. Quintana is an excellent boxer and uh, we've seen him on a world class level and it was strange the ease with which Cotto was able to beat him. And really a credit to Miguel Cotto. And he attacked the body of Quintana. See here, Paul Williams has his hands full. He lost the first round. He's losing this round so far. This is what Paul Williams needs to do. He needs to throw that double jab, double jab, double, triple jab. Give Quintana something to be concerned about. That right hand again from Quintana. You know, we, we talked to Quintana about his health club that he bought. Because again, he's able to kind of dig in and tie up Williams. It's not a gym, boxing gym, it's an actual health club. He said he's added nutrition and weight training for this fight. Right now, early, it's paid dividends for him. Quintana's finding Paul Williams easy to hit, which is odd considering Williams' height and reach advantage. The combination by Quintana. Started to the body and he went up to the head. Max, you talked about it earlier. Quintana's a good boxer and he's showing those skills against a guy who's taller as he lands a straight right hand. Let me say something. Fights that look like this in the early rounds generally result with the Quintana fighter knocking out the Paul Williams fighter in the later rounds. He's repeatedly landing to the head cleanly. You know, in Williams' last three fights, he's been throwing 101 punches around. You see his number here, almost through two, and Quintana continues to just dig in. Yeah, to me, it seems like Paul started off a bit slow. He needs to really get into his groove now because he's allowed Quintana to hit him with some shots where he shouldn't have really gotten hit. So he's got to make sure to correct that defensive problem that he has right now. He ate another left hand. Quintana thus far, is, it's like the Joel Julio fight. He's completely outclassing Paul Williams through the first two rounds. And he lands a left hand. Quintana does. Quintana just tying up Williams because he got a body shot in to end round number two. 
Immediately following tonight's telecast, stay tuned for the premiere of Countdown to Pavlik Taylor 2. We'll take you behind the scenes into the training camps and personal lives of both fighters as they prepare for next Saturday night's rematch live on pay-per-view. Monday, February the 11th, catch the next Real Sports with Brian Gumbel. Among the stories, a profile of reigning Indianapolis 500 and IndyCar Series champion Dario Franchitti about to make his debut on the NASCAR circuit. Listen, we're getting to him. In, in the book with the left hook and your right hand out, okay? You got him. Fix him in. The jab is getting there. Very confident Carlos Quintana through the first two rounds. Lennox, so far Quintana has had the edges. Williams lands a right hand. What does Williams have to do here to turn things back in his favor? Well, like I said, he, he needs to throw triple, double jab. I think the, the movement of Quintana has given Paul Williams a little trouble now. It's, and really, it really breaks down to style. Styles makes fights. So he hasn't gotten used to Quintana's style yet to really find out what he needs to do. Why but, is he so easy to hit with that right hook? We saw it against Sean Bay Mitchell, a small, really, really junior welterweight yeah, moving up in a fight Williams dominated. And here against Quintana Lennox, he's, he seems to be very easy to hit with, with the southpaw hook. Well, you, you know, he's just not used to that style. And uh, it's definitely a problem that he needs to correct in the gym or even now. See something with his left hand? Is he carrying his left hand too low? He, he is carrying it a bit low. And, and, you know, you have to remember, Paul Williams has long arms, so it's not easy for him to really bring them up real fast. And when he throws them out, they have to come all the way back. Max, you mentioned Charbet Mitchell. Not the prime Charbet Mitchell either. No, an old Charbet Mitchell. Old and small. Williams dominated the fight, but he was hit a couple times with some clean right hooks. And this is a younger, more prime Carlos Quintana, who was something like an eight to one underdog coming into this fight, which looks pretty ridiculous right now. I haven't seen the Paul Williams hook yet, the hook that you've been talking about. Yes, we were told uh, by his camp that the money's on the hook. They've been watching tape of Bob Foster, the great light heavyweight champion and vicious hooker, and uh, are trying to imitate Foster's hook. You've seen some good Head side side head movement by Paul Williams. Anytime you're against the ropes like that, you know, you don't want to be a sitting target, so you have to move that head around. Williams does seem to have come out this round Let's with go, renewed out, vigor. Come on, fight, throw punches. But Contel's right, landed some good shots right, too. Step out. Tana's using just enough movement to get away from that jab of Williams. And Williams' left hand is not really coming as straight as it's supposed to be. It's more of a slap in left hand. Katana jumps in and scores with a combination. Gets away from danger and shoots to the body. This is a very interesting round where Williams has tried his best to change the momentum of the fight. And Katana has responded by staying calm and answering with punches. See, right here, you know, he's, uh, Paul Williams is smothering himself. He has to remember he's got long arms. Although he loves to mix it up, he's got to give himself punching room. Tight round three. How you feeling? How do you feel? Yes, we're doing it. Listen to me. Hey, don't, don't stand against the ropes there. Don't stand in the ropes. Okay, you gotta hit the, the body. Walk to the side. In the middle of the ring, that's what you do. Jab and jab. And the, and the restraint is straight. Okay? So what you got to do is send those things, you got to do it. But now you got to come back with a counter punch. You follow me? You throw one twos, one twos, one two. You got to throw threes and fours now, you're going to catch it. You follow what I'm saying? Because he's going to go when you go. But he's looking for you to go with two. But when you come back with three, four, you got him on the third four. So Carlos Quintana and Paul Williams get accepted to start. 
of round number four. Let's get check of Harold Letterman score card. Okay, Bob, two rounds to one. 29, 28, Carlos El Indio Quintana. Bob, he won the first two rounds using that left hand over the top, giving Paul Williams angles, just moving, going side to side, and led to some tremendous right hooks as well. But in round three, Paul Williams picked up the pace and just out fought this guy. There's a couple of things that, that I want to talk about. Number one, people are going to ask about the beard of Paul Williams. The rule is this. If that beard either can cushion the punch or can scratch the other guy, it's illegal. But Quintana would have to object, and the commission would have to make him shave. The second thing is, you got to say something about the weight. The guy can't 17 pounds. I mean, Paul Williams is a super middleweight. Anyway, two to one, Quintana. The jab's getting on track for Paul Williams. Harold spoke of the beard, the literal beard. His figurative beard has been very good. He stood 12 rounds with Antonio Margarito. But I don't know that Margarito landed as many clean, flush punches at the end of the punch, where it's really snapping that punch off in that in 12 rounds as Quintana's here landed in four. And Cantana had a good start to this fourth round. He landed some pretty good shots early. You have to look at the conditioning of Cantana because he's the, he's the kind of guy that gets tired down the road. And uh, he has to watch out, especially for the late rounds, because Paul Williams still looks a little bit fresh. It's interesting just glancing at the CompuBox numbers as Williams rips off a jab. Williams at 19% with his jabs. Quintana at 30% so far in the fight. Williams' right eye seems to be closing a little bit. Quintana sticks and moves away. Quintana's doing a good thing about giving giving di different angles to Paul because he's making it difficult for Paul Williams to hit him. Williams can't set his feet to punch. Gets a shot in, gets a left. He moved and he threw a punch and he landed. Under 40 seconds to go in the round. Right off, fellas. 30 seconds to go in the round. Quintana's landed some pretty right, good stop, shots. Stop, stop, stop. Paul Williams really has to be concerned about Quintana's left hand because that's the, his money punch and it's always right, coming stop, over the stop. top. Yes, There's the end of round number four. Lennox, Carlos Quintana's had a very good job of landing some left hands against Paul Williams. We're going to take a look at some of the left hands he's been able to score against Williams. And here, here's the left hand. It looks like Paul's, Paul's not even looking at the punch and concerned about it. He's more concerned about what he wants to do. But he better be concerned about it because you keep on tapping on that rock and all of a sudden it's going to break. We're winning this fight. Okay, from now on, we're gonna kill him. Yeah, the hands on the bottom, get there, get close. Even hold him. He, he can't hit you. It's get to him. They mentioned the jab. 25 of 89 for Quintana through the first four rounds. 28% to the 18% for Williams. You know who looks even better than Carlos Quintana right now. I mean, the story of this fight is basically Carlos Quintana punches Paul Williams in the face. But um, Miguel Cotto is looking very good right now. And I think some of Paul Williams' deficiencies, which are not superficial, it's not like you can just see him against an average guy and notice them quickly, but against a guy of Quintana's caliber, you can, are a result of his lack of experience on an advanced amateur level. A guy like Miguel Cotto was the highest pedigree in his amateur career, and Paul Williams was not. And uh, that's being exposed a bit here by Carlos Quintana. 25 amateur bouts for Paul Williams. Shoots the left hand over the top, misses with the right hook. Stop. 
Kind of able to avoid danger and then kind of reset. Well, you know, he's he's had a plan, Quintana, and Lennox seems to be following it very well. He seems very relaxed in that. Yeah, he's relaxed. That's because he's not really getting hurt or hit. And uh, he's, he's in a good survival mode, but he's able to get across some good left hands. You see, what's been most impressive to me about Quintana so far tonight has been when Williams makes the conscious decision, I'm going to start smoking now, I'm going to start really putting pressure on him and moving my hands. Quintana doesn't panic, he remains calm, continues to box, weathers the storm, and then goes back on the offensive. Quintana hooks to the body. Williams tries to answer. That one was on him. By Quintana. Get off his head, Paul. Get off his head, Paul. Williams holding behind the head. He's cautioned for that. Step. Great. Slow left from Step away. Step away. Williams did not make him pay for it. Well, like I said, he's slowing down in this fight, and as the rounds get go on, he will slow down because I've noticed in the fight against Goto, he was, you know, his shape wasn't in good shape. <laughs> but he's getting across with that left hand quite easily, and it is slowing down. Williams not able to make him pay. All right, stop, both of you, stop. The idea, what I said to introduce this fight off the top, that Paul Williams potentially poses the biggest threat to Mayweather looks ridiculous at this moment. Right now, Quintana is posing a threat to Paul Williams. Five of the books, scheduled for 12. You're not listening. You got to take his comfort zone away. And how you gonna do that? You're gonna keep him at the end of your jab, you're gonna do face, and you're gonna keep pressure on him. You got to pressure him there. Okay. Side to side. Lennox the corner, George Peterson, the trainer, Paul Williams said you've got to use your jab. So far in the fight, he's 25 of 159 with the jab. That's 15%. He has not been effective with his jab at all. We're talking about Paul Williams. Yeah, Paul Williams needs to three, throw triple jabs, double jabs, and, uh, you know, apply the pressure. You no, know, he just threw two jabs, followed by a straight left, and they all hit air. Yeah, but he's, he's got to keep the pressure on Quintana because uh, right now Quintana looks like he's becoming more tired as the fight progresses. Well, he sticks a left hand in and moves away, does Quintana. Paul Williams' um, All right, stop. lack of punch, step away. real hard punching, really sitting down on his punches, as they say, and putting something into his shots could, could haunt him because he's behind stop. in this fight. Break, break, and stop. pretty Switch soon it. it's going to get to, although he's fighting better this round, it could get to the point where he needs something dramatic to win. He's not throwing the kind of punches that have kind of fight-changing power behind them so far. Quintana dips away, shoots a left hand, and then ties him up. And Paul Williams is not giving himself the kind of punching room he needs having such long arms. He needs to keep Quintana at the end of his punches, especially with that jab, so he can start throwing some more punches to connect. But you saw when he did that earlier in this round, Lennox, when he had Quintana in the corner, he landed to great effect with a straight left hand. And then there's Quintana with a left hand. Lennox, is, is, but isn't some of that have to do with what Quintana is doing? as far as his movement? Yeah, his movement is, is definitely throwing him off because he's not used to his movement. And this is a style fight because the different styles are, re are really what's making this fight unusual, especially for Paul. Paul's not used to this style. He hasn't seen this style for a while. 
and uh, he's used to guys coming after him. Now he has to go after a mover, and he's forgetting about throwing some jabs. Plus, he's getting hit. You know, right it, hook and a left. It may sound funny because Williams is so much taller, but from the outside, Cantana's timing Williams to great effect. And when they're on the inside, in fact, is where Williams is having some success with short hooks and uppercuts. Maybe, you know, counterintuitively, Williams should try to move inside, stay there, and fight with Cantana on the inside a little bit. But when he's moving inside, he's getting caught with that left hand. And that's what, what I'm concerned about when it comes to uh, Quintana. It seems to me, though, that Lennox, he's being timed from the outside cleanly and crisply from Quintana, by Quintana. Left hand by Williams. There he found the range on the left hand, as you pointed out earlier, Lennox. He, he found the range again from the outside. He's got to continue doing that and, and triple and double it. Of round six for Quintana and Williams. Halfway through the scheduled 12 rounder. On February the 23rd, HBO Sports presents a very special night of box programming. On the East Coast, viewers will see the premiere of Joe Lewis, America's Hero Betrayed, followed by a heavyweight unification fight between Vladimir Klitschko and Sultan Abragamov. On the West Coast, viewers will see our live boxing, followed by our Joe Lewis film. You do not want to miss the Joe Lewis film. It is spectacular. Keep him at the end of that jam. Keep pressure on them. Take what he give you. Seven. We start round number seven. Let's check in with our unofficial ringside scorer, Harold Letterman. Okay, Bob, you know, after four rounds, I had this fight three rounds to one for Quintana. He was winning this fight going away. But in rounds five and six, Paul Williams evened it up. I have it 57 57, three rounds apiece. Williams coming on. I mean, he's jabbing well with the right hand, landed a straight left, and Quintana's just not landing the clean, hard shots that he landed in the first four rounds, which Williams probably lost three of. Just like you saw right there. Anyway, three to three, 57 57, all these. All right, Harold, I gave round five to Quintana, actually. He, but he, he, I mean, Harold's right. Paul Williams is coming on. Whether he's won as many rounds as Quintana is debatable, but he's certainly doing better in the last couple rounds than he was early in the fight. Lance, we talked about the new training regime for Quintana. He added weights and different nutrition. He looked like he might be tiring. In the last round, according to CompuBox, it was the fewest punches he had thrown in the fight, 40, and the fewest connects, 11. Well, he could have been taking a round off. We're going to tell him this round, but to me, he looks like he's, he's getting tired and tiring in this fight. And coinciding with that is Paul Williams man catching him on the end of those straight left man. hands from time to time. Sluggish left hand from Quintana. Stop. Break. A little blood from the nose of Williams. The other thing is, even if Paul Williams has won as many rounds as Quintana, those rounds were much closer than the decisive rounds that Quintana has won, in which Quintana's really dished out punishment to Paul Williams. That may have taken some out of Quintana because, uh, you know, right now he's not throwing as many punches as he did before. So much for my maybe Williams needs to stay inside theory. He got hammered with an uppercut. for a tall, lanky fighter who should be able to find establish the range better from long distance with the jab. He is comfortable on the inside. And that's where it's dangerous for him being a tall fighter because, you know, those shorter guys with the shorter arms gets the punches across a lot quicker. Sure. What we just saw there, a lazy left from Quintana and then a right followed up by Williams. Now Quintana shoots a left hand. Williams comes back with a right. Good jab by Williams. Terrific action. Lazy left from Quintana. Doesn't have the same snap it had earlier. Right. 
Williams responds. Things starting to heat up here at the Pachanga Resort and Casino. Seven rounds down. Scheduled for 12. You're not going in the trail of punches. And he know you're going to throw one, two, and he's going to beat you with that. But if you throw some threes and fours, you're going to catch him. You got me? But you won't do it. And you also got to go to his body. He looking for you to come to the head every time, and he gonna beat you to the head shot. Okay. Now, if you know the one foot shot, we do good. Now you throw punch it real hard, hard and, and throw, throw it to the chest. Okay. Okay. Is Paul Williams finding his groove, catching him at the end of his punches, like I was saying, with that left hand? And here's another one with the right kind of slapping hook. Maybe he should bring that elbow up a bit and get more power behind it. In the last round, Paul Williams threw a fight high 81 punches in the round, and his 19 connects, according to CompuBox, the most in any round to this point. That was last round was Paul Williams' most effective of the fight. But as Lennox points out, even the straight left hand that you saw in between rounds replayed was more of a jab thrown off the back foot than a real hard power punch. And the right hook was also slapping. He is not getting proper leverage on his punches, Paul Williams. So far. Bob Papa, Lennox Lewis, Max Kellerman. HBO's Boxing After Dark from the Pachanga Resort and Casino in Temecula, California. Paul Williams making the first defense of his welterweight title, taking on a game. Carlos Quintana. Quintana had the advantage early in the fight. Williams has started to come on over the last two and a half rounds. There have been no knockdowns so far in the fight. Early in the fight, it was the left hand of Quintana that controlled the action. Williams getting into a better rhythm. And a little less zip on the punches from Quintana. In fact, his corner cautioned him about that in between rounds. Got to throw harder punches. What could Paul Williams do to actually start landing that jab, Lennox? He seems to be discouraged because Quintana moves and the now, jab hits air. Let me tell you what he should be doing. He should be punching at the chest trying to break Quintana's chest with his jab and uh, you know when he gets hit in the chest he'll keep his head still and make it more of an easier uh, uh, shot to get hit with. Looks like there's a nickel on the left eye of Williams on the eyebrow or maybe just underneath. Williams left eye was cut in the Margarito fight. Right eye is closing a little, and his left eye is now cut in a bad spot right, over the eye. You know, most boxers, when they get hit in the face, get stuck, that natural bruising around the eye, and uh, you know, Paul Williams looks like he has that natural bruising. It's not, it's not a situation where his eye is going to close. It's more of a bruise. Chopping right, Williams really Williams. finding the range with that right hook over the last 30 seconds or so. Right hand to the body from Quintana. Quintana looks like he's found some a second gear there. He looks a bit fresher in this round. Though Williams' punch yeah, rate seems to be go. increasing. Right, stop, right? And, and his land rate seems to be increasing. He seems to be landing more of these shots now. Final seconds of the eighth. Quintana slowing down just stop. enough. Right? Top man for Paul Williams, Ruben Gomez. Working on that left eye. You got knock him out. You got knock him out of here. So, so I, I understand how you feel. But let me tell you one thing, it's not over until it's over. Right. You feel? Look, and you still can do this thing. But you got to, you got to throw some trailing punches. He's counting your punches. There is. Moriema Quintana, the wife of Carlos Quintana, son Jean Carlos, who's 11, also in the crowd. He also has three daughters back at home in Puerto Rico.
Paul Williams having to deal with a cut left eye as we begin round number nine. Peterson talking to Williams in the corner said you can still win this thing as though Williams was giving him some indication somehow or he read on Williams face or his body language that that Williams was discouraged. Left hand by Quintana. That was something that worked with tremendous frequency earlier in the fight. Obviously, he, he must have known that, you know, heavyweights doesn't really help a boxer, so I'm sure he's, he's using the right kind of weights, and uh, he's got a good conditioner. Incidentally, Paul Williams threw a, right, a rare body punch in this fight. It landed, and Quintana immediately backed away. Left hand from Quintana. He's kind of rediscovered that left hand a little bit here. He hasn't found out how to make it work for him. Right there, he hit Paul Williams, and... Paul Williams took a step back, so that was a, a stunning blow for him. Yeah, some of the best punches of this round have been landed by Quintana with that left hand. Almost all of the best punches of this fight have been landed by Quintana, and yet Paul Williams' determination has resulted in a scenario where he's likely in the fight on the scorecards. This could be a big rebound round for Quintana, who has been kind of dripping away over the last few rounds. And Paul Williams doesn't have an answer for Quintana's left hand. It's always finding its mark. Big stabilizing round for Carlos Quintana. Williams with a cut on the left eye and maybe one on the right as well. Now you're looking good. Three rounds, Baba. That's three more rounds to go. That's all we got is three rounds. And you're a world champion. Following him around. And he gave you that wheel. He does you fine. Give him some water. Give him some water. You're following him around, Paul. You got it? And he's hitting you that wheel. Okay? Snap to it, brother. You got it? This is the nice one. You got it. Throw your feints and you got to keep him at the jet. You're not moving your head and he, he closing his eyes and hitting you. Because you're not moving it. Okay? You got to yes. okay. you okay? right, left, right. left, finds its mark, and he moves yes. after that. Katana, 20 of 50 in connects, 14 power shots. Harold Letterman, how do you have it scored? Five rounds to four. 86, 85, Paul Williams. Bob, I thought that Carlos Quintana landed enough left hands to steal a ninth round, but Paul Williams had won four rounds in a row, five, six, seven, and eight, because Carlos Quintana really was exhausted. And you can understand that when a big guy like Paul Williams lays all over him, I mean, we know that he weighs 164, and he starts laying all over him, Quintana's exhausted. Be as it may, Paul Williams has the momentum, Quintana's got to land some more clean right hands. Five, four, Williams. Williams with a cut on the right eye and the left eye. As, as exposed as Paul Williams has been in this fight by punches like that from Carlos Quintana, he's also showing why he's a difficult package to overcome. Even when you're fighting the perfect fight practically as Quintana is, and Williams is painfully easy to hit.
hit on a night like this. All right, stop. He has a sturdy beard. He's taking the punches, and it's tough to break his will. He continues to come at Cantana, and he continues to move his hands, Paul Williams. Lex, this also looks like a mentally grueling fight for Cantana, where he's got to be perfect almost for all three minutes for him to be in the stop, round. Stop it is, it is meant, but you know, he's, he's focused. He knew what he wanted to do. He realizes that uh, left hand is a money punch for him, and he's trying to land it, just like you see seen there. He's found the radar again with that left hand, Carlos Quintana. Here, the corner of Williams saying the long jab, then go downstairs. We don't need any of you, We don't need any of you. got to go straight to him. We got to keep pressing him. Tyler tries to shoot to the body. There's the left hand over the top. Combination back from Williams. If there's a uh, Bob Foster right, stop, money on the hook somewhere out. in Paul Williams' repertoire, it would be uh, wise to unveil it at some point soon. We've got two rounds after this one. The town of digs on the inside. Shoots the left hand again. Williams smothered. And it's obvious that Paul Williams isn't concerned about that left hand, but, you know, like I said, after a while, it starts stop, stop, stop. to become effective. Might not be worried about it, but it's losing him around. And whatever it is on the scorecards, almost all of the real punishing shots have been landed by Quintana in this fight. And Paul, and Paul Williams, he's not throwing straight shots. His punches are really slappy. End of 10. Obviously, round five could be one of those swing rounds when you look back at it. It's where Harold and I both differ. Two rounds to go. Okay? That's it. The championship round. And it's yours. Okay, give him the same thing. Let, let's, let's go for the passer. Hey, we gotta be careful with the decision. So we need to get up there, make a little, put a little more effort. All right? Now what you got to do, you got to show him something different. You got to come with the left hand lead and come back with the hook. But you also got to get low. Yes, Quintana finding his range again with the left hand. <laughs> Williams trying to come back with the hook. Here's another left hand finding his range. This is what I'm talking about. You don't want to receive too many of those type of shots. According to CopyBox, in the last two rounds, Quintana has landed 41 of his punches to Williams' 24. 41 of 107 for Quintana over the last two rounds, where he's gotten back into this fight. Push off, push off. Basically landing every other punch he throws, and they're landing cleanly and crisply. There's Williams starting it off with a jab. Good job by... The cut man in the corner of Williams, handling the cuts on both eyes. Stiff punch there by Williams. I mean, the, the punches that Williams land, are, are, they're not sending the sweat flying, you know? Katana hits Williams, the sweat goes flying because they're landing so flush. Well, Williams is throwing snappy punches, you know, he's using his speed, and by the time his arm fully gets to the end of of Quintana's chin, right, stop, there's a lot stop. of snap behind stop the punch. Separate. As what Harold talked about earlier, the bigger man kind of leaning on the smaller Quintana. This fight keeps going like this, they're gonna have to change Paul Williams' nickname to Paul the Punished Williams, because Quintana is punishing him in this fight for all his mistakes. Defensive sloppiness on Paul Let Williams. Him go, Let him go. Fight it will be enough to take away Williams' title. All right, stop, stop, step away. Watch behind the head. We got to over the top. I'm from the old school. You have to really beat a guy to take away his title. But he's doing it 
Quintana's doing a good job of learning that left hand. And, you know, I wouldn't want to be a judge in this, in this fight. Quintana may have already taken Williams on official title as most avoided guy in boxing away with this performance. The left hand to the body, they exchange big shots. Here in the final 40 seconds of the 11th. Coming out of the cut along the right eye of Williams. He's got a cut on the left eye as well. And, that, and that's gushing a little blood there. It's, it's spouting blood. The cut, cut over Williams' right eye. Williams reaching there. Quintana didn't make a pack. Stop. Stop punching. Step back clean. Step away. End of 11. And a tight one. Can Quintana pull off the upset? Good stiff right hand from Quintana. Quintana says he wants to win this last round. That's why there's a lot of pep in his step right now. I don't see this fight as being as close as Harold sees it, but it's likely the judges could, you know, see it as a really close fight. Um, if I'm in Paul Williams' corner, I think I'm calling to, for him to do everything he can to stop Quintana in this round, as unlikely as that appears to be. I believe whoever wins this last round wins the fight. Very close fight in my eyes. Well, that shot a little low by Quintana to the body of Williams. Right, stop. stop punching, stop punching. Williams cut on both eyes. Quintana has fought discipline. He's been able to land the left hand early in the fight, then late. Middle rounds were to Williams. Right, stop! Stop punching! Stop! Good job. Zachary's going to look at the cuts. Let the fight continue. Fuck. The left side's aggravated by the head. Right, stop! Great, fellas. Come on. Time looked like a little bit of a stall mode, tying up Williams. They both dig to the body. Time a little cautious. Williams not able to connect. Under a minute to go in the fight. Quintana with a left hand to the cheek of Williams. Right, stop up here. Stop. What this is an indication of is not that Paul Williams throws punches the way he in bunches and therefore doesn't hit with power, but that Paul Williams, at least at this point in his career, is not capable of punching with real knockout power, or else he'd be doing it right now. Fantana touches him with a left hand and shoots a hook to the body. And then he smothers Williams. Taking the air out of the ball here. Is he scoring just enough and then tying up the champion? Well, I think he's scoring enough. 
you know, really, really breaks down to how a person looks at the last round. A lot of people would say, you really have to go for it. In Kukana's mind, he's saying he just wants to do enough and make sure he doesn't want to get hit and score the points. Uh, Carlos Quintana thinks he's pulled off the upset. Here at Temecula, a disciplined 12 rounds. The left hand worked effectively. Williams had his moments. Tight scoring. Williams dealing with cuts in the right eye and the left eye. See, Harold Letterman has it. Two points for Williams. Winning the last two rounds. Some would say at least the 11th round for Quintana. Pretty tight. Well, let's take a look at the judges that will be scoring this 12 round battle. Jose Cobain, 11 title fights on his resume. He had Larios ahead in Larios' 12th round stoppage against Vasquez. Tony Krebs, first title fight. Had Taylor ahead of Raul Marquez in a Taylor stoppage. And Michael Pernick from Florida, 41 title fights in the Taylor Spinks decision. He scored it in favor of Taylor. Bad cut on the right eye, cut on the left eye. Williams had to deal with that throughout the course of this fight. Let's find out how the judges had it scored to our ring announcer, Michael Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, after 12 championship rounds, great rounds from challenger and champion, we go to the scorecards. Joe Cobian, Jose Cobian, 115-113. Tony Krebs, 116-112. Mike Pernick, 116-112. All to the winner by unanimous decision. And new! into the ring Moriyama as well tears of joy for the Quintana family as he wins a unanimous decision victory over Paul Williams and hands Williams the first loss of his professional career Carlos Quintana a decided underdog pulls off the upset he said he had a plan he felt Margarita was able to hit Williams he felt he would be able to do better and Carlos Quintana takes Paul Williams welterweight title back to Puerto Rico in impressive fashion. And for Paul Williams, the bitter taste of defeat for the first time in his professional career, he is now 33 and 1. Let's take a look at the final punch numbers for Quintana and Williams. Williams in his last three fights averaged over 100 punches thrown per round. Was not able to do that. As you take a look at some of the numbers, Quintana sharp at 36 percent he was able to land his power punches throughout the course of this fight Quintana using that left hand and that was very effective at 46 percent of his power shots it was economical but it was effective two of the judges had it 116 112 115 113 Max Kellerman's in the ring with the new champion Carlos Quintana congratulations Carlos a tremendous performance what did you see from Paul Williams heading into this fight that made you believe that you can do what you just did? I'm, I'm a great fighter. Everybody knows. Maybe the last time I didn't look that good. Uh, I knew I was going to win. I was in good shape because I am a good fighter. 
What is it specifically you saw from Paul Williams that made you confident going into the fight? Was there any particular, did you know he'd be easy to hit with a hook? Did you see anything specific? Específicamente, tú viste de Paul Williams que tú estabas seguro que ibas a ganar. Algo fue algo, algún hook o algo que él tiraba que tú sabías que tú podías capitalizar. Yo se lo dije, su alcance no es tan grande. Tengo un muy buen boxeo. Pude haberlo noqueado, pero decidí boxear mejor para ganar la pelea seguro. Pero es un gran peleador. Lo que pasa es que yo tengo, yo tengo un gran boxeo y ustedes quizás no lo reconocen así. Paul, Paul Williams es un buen peleador, pero yo sabía que yo podía ganar esta pelea. Yo podía haberlo noqueado, pero había un problema con mi respiración y no me salió todo bien. Pero es un buen peleador, pero así soy yo. Ok, estás en una división muy crowded welterweight division right now. You're a player again in that division. Uh, a, a Cotto rematch may be a hard sell at this point, but is there anyone else that you have your eye on at 147 pounds? Yo le dije a Paul, a su grupo, que pensara en mí. Estaba pensando en el futuro. Hoy y mañana voy a celebrar. Ya la semana que viene empezamos. Pelear con cualquier peleador. I told Paul Williams, don't overlook me, don't get too confident, don't pass me. I'm a good fighter. I can't say what's going to happen in the future. We're going to celebrate, then we'll think about what we'll do. Congratulations, Carlos. Tremendous performance. <laughs> Paul Williams. The now once beaten Paul Williams. What happened tonight, Paul? You know, the night wasn't my night. You know, I can't say nothing from my town. He showed up tonight. I didn't show up. No, that happened in Boston. You know, hey, one of them nights. It seemed that he was able to hit you easily in the early rounds, especially with the right hook. Coming into this fight, were there any precautions that you took defensively? Do you feel you came in overconfident? No, de de definitely not overconfident stuff. I came in like a, any other fight, this, that. I just ain't getting my rhythm tonight, you know. That came to, that's, that's all, you know. What did Quintana do to throw you off your rhythm? Basically, he didn't do nothing, though. He, didn't, he, just, he just executed his plan. I just couldn't get my plan in intact, you know. So I, I didn't go to the body like I, I trained and stuff. I know. I just say it's one of the nights I just ain't perform like I normally perform. It seemed as though this would have been a good night to unveil a, 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 a setting down on your punches kind of hook that you've been talking about. Um, you didn't seem to really punch with leverage as the fight wore on, and you needed to do something to turn it around. Why not? Like I said, you know, so I, all I can think of that I just ain't execute. I just ain't getting my rhythm. That's the main thing, you know. Uh, I tried, you know what I'm saying, this, it just ain't come out as I, as I expected. Paul, you fought hard all 12 rounds. Appreciate the performance. Oh, I appreciate y'all having me on here. Thanks, Paul. Bob. All right, Max. Well, we asked Carlos Quintana yesterday during the fighter meetings what his goals were, and he said, this fight would propel me and give me an opportunity to make more money. Well, he's propelled himself into that opportunity to make more money, Lennox, and now he can buy another health club or two, which he said he wanted to do. I gave him the last four rounds. I had it 116-112 for Quintana. What was it about Carlos Quintana tonight that enabled him to get to a taller, rangier Paul Williams? You know, obviously he thought about this fight before he was in it, and he realized that he needed to do something special. And what he did special was give different angles. He was very hard to hit, and he was able to throw that left hand with effective force. What about Paul Williams as Carlos Quintana will begin his celebration tonight? Uh, Paul Williams put on a lot of extra weight between the weigh-in and today, was not able to execute his game plan. Limited amateur experience. Where does he go from here? Well, you know, back to the drawing board, back to the gym. He's got a couple things to work on. And he didn't have no answer for that uh, Quintana's left hand. And he needs to go back into the gym and work on a couple of things. But I'm sure he's going to be a, a force in the future. And don't count him out yet. All right, Lennox, Max Kellerman joins us back from ringside. Max, it's been a week of upsets in sports, starting with the Super Bowl. And now tonight, Paul Williams, a heavy favorite, comes in. And, and all the praise goes to Carlos Quintana because he fought a disciplined fight. Where does this put the welterweight landscape now well I, the one thought that I have right now I'm sure many boxing fans have right now is man Miguel Cotto's good because Miguel Cotto rolled Carlos Quintana and I, I started this broadcast by saying that b before the uh, Williams Quintana fight that Paul Williams is an inconvenient truth that as much as everyone's talking about a Floyd Mayweather potential fight against Miguel Cotto or Antonio Margarito one day it's in fact Williams that presents potentially the biggest obstacle for Floyd Clearly, that's not the case. 
Carlos Quintana is the truth, or at least he's a truth detector. He'll find out the truth about his opponent against Joel Julio, who is a crude but very highly touted prospect undefeated when Quintana fought him. Quintana exposed Julio against Paul Williams, a very intimidating physical package. Uh, but, a, but another guy like Julio, without an extensive amateur background, Carlos Quintana exposed him. But against Miguel Cotto, who had the most extensive amateur background you can have, international competition, Olympics, who has beaten Shane Mosley now and has dominated everybody on a professional level, Quintana couldn't compete. Um, it says a lot about Cotto, and that's who I'm thinking about right now. Well, what we learned tonight as well is that's why they play the game, that's why they fight the fights, because on paper it looked like this would be one for Williams to kind of use his skill, use his volume of punches, but Carlos Quintana had other ideas tonight. Max, pleasure working with you as always. Lennox, great job as well. Well, that wraps it up from here at ringside as Carlos Quintana pulls off the upset, unanimous decision victory. If you missed any part of tonight's telecast, you can catch it in its entirety on HBO tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. and on HBO 2 tomorrow afternoon and Tuesday evening. Next on HBO, stay tuned for the premiere of Countdown to Pavlik Taylor 2. So for our entire HBO crew, this is Bob Papa saying good night and thanks for being with us on HBO's Boxing After Dark. This has been a presentation of HBO Sports. On Saturday, February 23rd, two big events, World Championship Boxing and a special HBO Sports film on one extraordinary night. Joe Lewis, an African-American icon, shattered racism and records. Witness the tremendous rise and tragic fall of a great American legend in Joe Lewis, America's Hero Betrayed. Plus, on World Championship Boxing, one night will establish the unified heavyweight champion. The unshakable power of Vladimir Klitschko clashes with undefeated Russian dynamo Sultan Ibragimov. That's what heavyweights are supposed to do. Klitschko versus Ibragimov, live. Two big events, one extraordinary night. Hosted by Jim Lampley from Madison Square Garden. Both events start Saturday, February 23rd at 8 p.m. Eastern and 6.30 p.m. Pacific. Next on HBO. Get ready for the highly anticipated rematch between two middleweight champs. Countdown to Pavlik Taylor 2. Next on HBO. On the next Real Sports. At the peak of his open wheel career, Indy 500 champion Dario Franchitti is making the rarely seen jump to NASCAR. After